Johnson believed that the task of a criticism is to establish principles and improve opinion into knowledge. For Johnson, criticism is both art and science. Johnson was against sentimentalism and he was a man of dictatorial view. Dr. Samuel Johnson was a great critic and the preface and the lives of the poets are major critical work of him. In the lives of the poets, where Johnson criticizes 52 poets, mostly belonged from 18th century. Among them, some significant writers are John Milton, John Dryden, Abraham Coley, Joseph Addison, Richard Savage, Alexander Pope, Jonathan Swift, James Thompson, William Collins, Thomas Gray, and many more. In this video, we are going to discuss about the life of Milton. As a caring biographer, first Dr. Johnson discussed Milton's early life and his ancestry and even discusses some of his domestic habits. Dr. Johnson said that Milton was so beautiful that he was called the lady of his college. And Milton was very skilled with the sword. After discussing Milton's personal life, Dr. Johnson wrote about the greatness of Milton's literary work and his fluency in several languages. And one by one, he severally criticized the works of Milton. Dr. Johnson was failed to accept Milton's anti-Catholicism. Johnson deeply criticized Milton's Aeropagitica which was published in 1644. It was a political work of Milton, where Milton wrote for the liberty of printing without license by the Parliament of England. According to Dr. Johnson, Milton wrote that just to defend his own political belief and nothing else. Johnson said Milton spared his own praise rather than praising others. Describing the early poems of Milton, Dr. Johnson said that because of his unfamiliarity with the Italian language, he cannot make any criticism of them. He greatly admired Milton's Latin poems, but he criticized Milton's short poems, odes, and lyrics. Where Dr. Johnson said that Milton's sonnets are very worst, and he criticizes Lycidius, which was published in 1637, is one of the book that the reader admires and lay down and forgets to take up again. Dr. Johnson said Milton thought that rhyme is not necessary for poetry. Describing Paradise Lost and Regained, Dr. Johnson said that Milton borrowed it from Homer. Dr. Johnson appreciated the structural compactness of Paradise Lost, but also said about its harshness in diction and uncertain rhymes, and Milton's unskillful allegory and didacticism. And in the end, Dr. Johnson said that Paradise Lost, like a typical neoclassicism poem, 